Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling is Zim. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at some new things in Zim 017 up here. Now we're at the Zim site, zimjazz.com. We've hit Zim 017 up above, and we're going to take a look at dropping. All right, we've got a couple different examples here. Let's go to this one. And what we can do now is this is a list and we can pull out from a list and drop it on a target like so. And we can pull from here. This is not in a list and pull that in a target as well. We can also take it and put it in a list like so. So isn't that neat? Um, basically, we can pull out of lists into targets and uh, we could also pull out and just drop it here if we wanted to, but we're dropping from the list onto targets and we're dropping from here to outside as long as we're, uh, it started off on the outside in the first place. <laughs> so there you go. And these ones can go back in the list. Let's <laughs> so go back in that list there. Um, so that's really exciting. That gives us lots of functionality. The Zim list is pretty amazing. It can be a basically a list of anything. Uh, any display objects. Often it's also uh, words, like a pull down kind of feel. And so if you want, you could pull out from that if you so desire, or they can be more display objects like we have here or a bunch of pictures, etc. So uh, that's that one. Let's show you this example too. It's quite similar, except here, instead of snapping back, we're allowed to make new objects, which can then be added to the list if, if we so desire, or put into here. Um, if we pull from here, we can put in the list, but we, we're not letting us take out of that now. So that's called final. We've set that once it's in there, we can't move it. Uh, this is called, what do we call that one? Not duplicate or something like that, but it, it's along those lines. We'll take a look at the parameters later. This is not final, so we can take these guys out of here. Uh, anyway, that, so just very similar, but a, a few different um, parameter uh, types that are different. The other one that relates to that as well was this was the first one that we did actually for uh, the situation in this. This is a bunch of lists. So we've got a bunch of lists that are empty. And then this is a list at the bottom here. Oh, and if we press it, we just went to Pixie. Thank you. Uh, thank you. No, thank you. Um, uh, no, I, I mean, uh, Pixie, that's great. But that's been your that's been your website for like. I don't know, 10 years or something, isn't that your first website? Uh, and now I was saying that too about Phaser, but Phaser actually has a brilliant website now. So uh, this was a ranking of websites. So Phaser was this similar for a long time. And then when we made this app, we noticed that Phaser <laughs> indeed changed. <laughs> They've just got like an amazing uh, um, parallax type, type site. Oh, wow, fantastic. Anyway, what we can do is rank these. I think Phaser is great. We'll put it as an A ranking. Woohoo! Yay! Pixie right here. Um, Pixie's great too. Uh, it's just uh, it doesn't quite have as many things as Phaser, so we'll put it here. And, and Pixie and CrateJS are quite similar. Since Pixie's still going, we might put it just up a little bit higher than CreateJS actually. Ah, well, maybe not. It's hard to say. CreateJS is totally stable. Zim is built on CreateJS, and we hardly have had to change anything to CreateJS. A few, a few changes, but over the last like four years, we haven't had to change a thing. It's just like totally stable. It's what the canvas maybe should have been in the first place. So it's fine there. Um, 3J, this is 3JS, and 3JS is just wonderful. It's so beautiful and simple and powerful. And we would put Zim up there as well. Zim is wonderful. The excellent 2D canvas framework, general canvas framework that can do all sorts of things. Way more than PaperJS. Ooh. Uh, way more than Canva. Canva at least still seems to be going and is certainly well used. Uh, I wish they were using Zim, but um, yeah, it's decent enough in Fabric, I guess, it's about the same as Paper.js. P5.js is super too, that's an A. All right, there's my rankings of uh, Canvas frameworks. <laughs> Woohoo! But do you see what we've done there? We, we did that with lists, and so um, there you go. Neat, um, but we realized that we can only drag from lists to lists. And then we realized, oh, there might be people that want to drag outside of a list to somewhere and actually not even use lists at all and drag onto targets. We'd always done that manually. So once again, that was back here in this situation where we were not even using a list. We've just got a, a container or a tile of three things. And there we dropped on it. So that's called a drop target. HTML had that uh, for a long time. 
Mind you, the early days of HTML5 dragging and dropping, holy moly, I, I worked with the dean of HTML5 at the time, Matthew Potter, to work on some dragging scripts. And I tell you, it was 100 lines, and these lines went right off the screen. They were so long. This dot, that, dot, 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 crap, 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 crap. And that was how to drag and drag and drop and stuff. Anyway, they probably tidied that up, or certainly jQuery has tidied that up, and, but uh, it was pretty unbelievable. Mind you, in, in the end, ZimDrag is also more than 100 lines, but ZimDrag is much more flexible. You can throw things, you've got um, uh, boundaries, you've got sliding. Well, sliding and throwing is the same thing. Bringing things on top or not, br dragging the whole container. And, anyway, we've got all sorts of things going on in... Um, in Zim drag, and now we've got one more thing, and that is a drop target. So isn't that wonderful? Woohoo! And snapping, and, and not snapping. Do you want to have a peek at the code? See what this is like? Okay, let's um, let's drop this down, and we will we'll do an explore. I think on the tile. Well, we could show the tile one too if I can find it. I've only got the dropping and the dropping two here. So we're using Zim 017. We had sad and happy pictures, did we? <laughs> I don't think we did. <laughs> I think at some point I might have been dra dragging uh, sad and happy pictures. Okay, so never mind. We don't have any assets, I believe. Uh, what about dropping two? Do we have those? A yeah, okay. We just kind of accidentally left some assets there, I think. Um, all right. And we've got a label, just normal Zim stuff. Here are the targets. It's a new tile of rectangles. So nothing special there, just a couple of rectangles, or three of them, I guess, three. <clears throat> there. We have a new container, and this is the container that has the drag on it. And it's saying that the drop targets are these targets items. So that's an array. You pass in an array to the drop targets. And targets.items is an array of the items in this tile right here. We can choose the type of drop hit test on it. Reg is kind of cool too because it like checks the registration point and makes you center it a bit more. But right now it's just based on the bounds. So uh, that's that. If we bring this over here, it's basically the bounds. If the bounds are hitting, uh, then it's hitting. So that'll be hitting still. Uh, if it were registration point, this would not be hitting, but it is. Okay, it's because it's not registration point. And whether we want to go back, whether we want to drop on it if it's uh, or test for a drop full, which we do, I guess. So that means we can't drop on something that is already full. Yeah. Okay, if, if that weren't the case, we could have dropped that right on top of that one too. And drop end is false. That means that we can pull it back out again if we want. Drop copy is false. That means we're not copying it as we drop. Uh, in the second case, in this one right here, we had a drop copy of true. So that's why we could drag and drop those guys. So this is just the container that holds the, the circle and the triangle. So the circle and the triangle are centered and then moved side by side right on that, in that container. Actually, if we wanted to, we could have just tiled those two things and put the drag on the tile. Tile's a container as well and not have even bothered making a container. Oh, but uh, yeah, that, that's true. I can't remember if in this case we're adding things. No, we're not. Um, so sometimes you might want to drop out of here and drop into another container that then can drop to somewhere else. And we're not doing that in this case, but... Um, or I don't think we are. <laughs> it gets a little confusing because we've got two or three things that we're all you know, moving about. All right, so what does this next one do? This is us making the list here, and we're just setting odds and making either rectangles or triangles and sizing them to something, the H, which is the height of the list, I suppose, the height, yeah. Uh, opening that list up a little bit so that we have some padding on it. So that's that's just making this list right here. Okay, a zim list. And then we've got a drop up. So list dot on drop up. We're going to 
Oh, yes. This is a tricky one, kind of. If we want to drag and drop after taking out of the list and add it to the container. Oh, um, but be careful, or, but careful only to add it if we drop on one of the targets of C. Uh, well, you'll have to read that and think about it. I think... Yeah, there was there were a few tricky things. I haven't reviewed it in a little while, so my apologies. But um, read that carefully and just note that we had to do some testing there before we add it to the the, um, the thing. Yeah, so that's adding it to C, right? So we did do some adding to the container. We could have still added to the container as a tile, but that would have maybe messed up the items of the tile. I don't know if that ever was needed again. Anyway, add to the list of drop targets of C. So C dot drop targets dot push list. Okay, so if you've got two items and you want them each to be drop targets of one another, then you cannot set those items. You see how when we made the list in the first place right here, uh, we did not set the drop items on it, did we? No, we didn't. But when we made the container right here, we did set the drop targets. Um, that's because the items already existed. Um, so what happens is one of them, you'll probably have to set a property afterwards is what I'm trying to get at here. So uh, you can't pass in the parameter of both uh, parameters to both of them because you haven't made the second one. So the first one can't get the parameters yet. That kind of deal. So that means we use the drop targets property and Oh, in this case, we're actually increasing the number. So I, I probably should have looked at this. <laughs> should I give up and just start over again? <laughs> After carefully looking, or doesn't it matter? I don't, I don't think it matters. You guys can come in here and take a look at it. I got a few other things to do. <laughs> So my apologies for, for not reviewing this. I made What happened is uh, for two weeks, I had laryngitis like for a week and a half. And so I, w I haven't been able to make the bubblings at the same time that I actually um, did, did the file. So that was kind of torturous. Luckily, we were working on a big, long project. Uh, that was, well, a week-long project. And that was the... Uh, we, we did another... Or we're doing another bubbling on that. Uh, called Slicer. Um, okay, so check out the Slicer. Uh, luckily, we got to work on that project, but that was a week's worth of, oh, very, 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 very complicated coding. And that's why I'm a little bit uh, sketchy on, on what I did two weeks ago. <laughs> All right, I remember it being fun, and it is relatively simple. Um, the other one was built even longer ago, like maybe a month ago. So there you go. You got some styles going on there. Come on in, check it out. Dropping to is fairly similar, except we just adjusted some of the parameters here. Okay. So that, uh, and you can try adjusting to, like right in the code on yourself. We say, hey, try toggling that to see what the drop end changes. Otherwise, basically the same code. Uh, let's dig in and see if we can find, what was that other one called? Canvas, I think it was right here. So this is the one that had the bunch of lists. And what I like about this is look at it. Isn't that nice? Right there. Just let you think about that. There's our label. Here's a set of links. Here's some colors. There's some letters. Just made a loop. We made the lists in a loop. So there's making each list for the letters. And then this is the, uh, the list of icons right here. And where they go to if you click them. And there's the drop targets. All right, so what that ended up making, that code right there, is this beautiful little app. Uh, by the way, this beautiful little app. Oh, come on, get back down there! <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, this beautiful little app. And by that way, that little um, diamond right there, we kind of like the diamond. We, we use the diamond in um, uh, the packer as well. So, and a few other places we've used diamonds as well. You don't have to have that though. If you want, you can just uh, get rid of the diamond and then it would just 
drag and not show diamonds and drop and that actually looks pretty good too but i was going to say i hope it's here it's right here yeah inspired by this youtube video so there's a link to it here or this wonderful fellow that we discovered uh, i want to meet him he's got a nice mustache if i remember correctly <laughs> it seems like a fellow that would have a nice mustache uh very well spoken energetic videos not quite doing the same thing that we're doing but they did a he did a ranking of JavaScript frameworks using this exact thing, but with React and Vue and Angular and so forth, and Flash as well, which was nice. And so that made me go, oh, okay, maybe I like this guy. Um, because I grew up using Flash, and of course, we're an extension of Flash. All that we're doing with CreateJS, all that we're doing with Zim um, is uh, Flash and beyond. We're, we're now, I would say, double the functionality of Flash is Zim. CreateJS was maybe a uh, quarter quarter of the functionality half of half the functionality of flash maybe containers bitmaps uh, but then zim came along and we've got way more components than flash ever had way more controls way more things that we can do and it is wonderful i would say that zim is at the height right here that's why it's at the s at the height of functionality for almost any framework i don't think i've ever seen anything with as much uh, as many options. I mean, I, I don't go into the React and Vue and Angular world. Maybe there's all sorts of, there probably is all sorts of components. They're all very panel-y based. And I don't think you're going to find a variety. Of, co of course, there's Unity. Unity's got a ton of stuff in it as well. But Zim's got a ton of stuff too. We've got emitters as well. We've got, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, there you go. And remember, we're not 3D, but we work in 3D. So Zim can actually work inside of 3JS on any surface there. And note, people are miles behind on that. And they're using Canva for that. You know, I just, I just don't understand it. It's, it's like, that's so finicky. And they have to do some extra stuff. And there's hardly anything you can do in Canva. We've got everything in Zim working on a surface in 3D. We tried to throw show the 3D guys, like the 3JS guys, you know, here it is, 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 here it is. You know, showing them, I don't know, I can't remember how many it was, 37 different examples of things that you could do on uh, the 2D surfaces there. And just hardly any feedback. <laughs> Strange, maybe one day. Uh, anyway, yeah, you build it, you can come. We do love 3JS as well, you're up here as well. But anyway, uh, this fellow, whoever, I can't remember his name, but check out this video right here, was the inspiration for that. And so what we want to do is an explore video specifically about this and uh, spend a little bit more time on um, what we're talking about here and also about uh, his videos as well and just explain all that a little bit more, I expect. Anyway, so this has been a bubbling. Now it's bubbling at Zim. Hopefully we covered all of that stuff. You can take a look at the docs uh, in Zim. So here's Zim right here. And take a look at the docs and look at list like so. And then list has these new drop, um, where they start drop Oh, more drops, drop, drop, drop. Oh, lots of drops. Wow, look at all those drops. My God, I didn't know I'm, I didn't know there was that much or that many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen different parameters for for drop. Okay, and then the similar parameters are available in drag. Right here, that's drag boundaries, drag all, no drag, drag right here where we have the drop stuff at the end of the drag as well. So you don't even need to use list now. It's built right into the drag. All right. I am Dr. Abstract, and I hope that you have a good day or night. How do we usually say that? <laughs> I think that's it. Uh, and this has been a What's Bubbling at Zim. That's the wrong bubbling thing. That's our old bubbling. Our, our new bubbling uh, sign takes some of those little bubbles a little bit more abstracted. Uh, anyway, there we go. What's bubbling at Zim? Uh, come visit us at zimjs.com slash... Uh, forum or forum.zimjs.com also or on discord as well zimjs.com slash discord if you have any questions about that uh, we've been using the the drag and drop now for a little while and it is quite handy cheers <laughs>